Hey everybody, Steph here. I'm gonna make myself a jellyfish, and I thought maybe you'd want to watch. I've seen a few people making jellyfish lately, and uh, the idea seems pretty simple. You cut out the part, that's the jellyfish body, you use vitrograph stringer for the tentacles, and perhaps, if I can get it open, some dots for bubbles. So I thought I would make one because it's been occupying my mind and I'm finally done with my Kickstarter until I teach classes. So I've got an open kiln. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut a four by eight inch sheet of clear. This isn't even actually Tecta. This is just plain old 1101-30 uh, because it's an old piece from 2015. And then what I did is I'm going to use Bullseye's 403, which is their opaline, because I just love it. Opaline is one of my favorite glasses to work with, uh, especially if you want to use a light-colored glass behind it to tint it. It's beautiful. So this is going to be kind of my jellyfish shape, and then what I'm going to do is savage the edges so there's sort of a ruffle here. And then, that is visible, right? Yeah. And then what I'm going to do is this is going to be underneath it. I'm going to lay the top piece under... And that'll give the jellyfish some three dimension. So also I will have space for, I'm not using this stringer, but so my stringers can fit underneath and they don't have to butt up against the jellyfish body. So what I'm gonna do is grab my cutter, good old pistol grip. No, I don't have any oil in this. It's because I can't find it. Um, and I'm gonna start cutting along my shape. And I'm not the world's greatest cutter, so don't expect this to work out nearly as well as the line's drawn and the line's not drawn that well. The nice thing about having a turntable is it does make some of these curves a lot easier. Flip it over. Find that I started right here. And we'll see with the breakers how this works out. These are a little bit different than my old breakers, but I just ordered a bunch of them off Amazon because I needed them to teach classes with. And I'm just breaking in chunks because I'm lazy. Hey, that broke pretty well. And I don't really care if the jellyfish turns out perfect because I've got a set of nippers. See, like right here, it's got a bit of an edge I don't love, but I think that'll be okay. So, move the opaline scraps. And I'm going to set them in a container so I know they're opaline, because otherwise I'm going to get a nasty surprise. And then I'm just going to go in and savage the edges just a little to make it look a little more organic. Because I don't think jellyfish have a sharp edge to them. So, there we go. I kind of like that shape. It's hard to see. Let's see if I've got something more solid. Here we go, a piece of black. It's got a more jellyfish sort of shape to it, I think. And then I'm going to check it against this. And that oval circle inside looks like it would fit just nicely enough to have the glass kind of slump down over it. So we're going to attempt to cut again. And the nice thing is with this one is it doesn't have to be perfect. And even if it breaks or something while I'm cutting it, it won't matter as much because it's going to be underneath. Yeah, don't try and cut upwards. That's a terrible idea stuff. I am a chaos monster though, so what do you expect? Okay, oval is kind of cut. Grosers or breaking pliers. We'll see how it turns out. Not bad so far. Like I said, even if it's split, I wouldn't be that worried because it's going to go under the jellyfish. And this is just for me. I mean, if I like it, I might make another one. But ultimately, the initial jellyfish is because I want a jellyfish. Okay. That's going to fit under nicely. I'm going to take the nippers and cut the sharp corners so it doesn't show 
any sort of, uh, uh, doesn't make any sort of rough edges underneath, but that's a, a pretty good piece, I think, for stacking up. Oh, hey, I cut my palm open. I am a winner. I really need to clean this desk. The noise you hear is the cleaning supplies I use. This is Bullseye, what they recommend to clean glass with, that they sell at their store. Otherwise, I use uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol, but I happen to be out at the moment. And my wife will not let me kidnap hers, which is for the 3D printer. Okay. So pieces are clean, and yes, I know Sharpie burns off in the kiln, but I still try and clean my glass because the one time I don't, you know as well as I do that it's going to uh, not burn off in the kiln right. I mean, Murphy's Law just loves to follow you around when you don't want it to. So I'm putting a dab of glass tack and a generic model down and setting my glass base on and then a little more on top of that to set the top of the jellyfish on. And like I said, if you haven't worked with opaline before, this stuff turns, well, opaque. Give me just a sec, I'll bring you a piece and show you. I'm fortunate enough to be able to see where it landed in my uh, shop. But let me clean it first, because otherwise you're gonna be going, why is stuff showing me brown glass? All right, Whew, dust. This is opaline. This is two layers of opaline cut in a three and a half inch circle and fused. It was for the foot of a bowl that I never got around to making because I broke the top. But this will turn out like this. And isn't that a lovely ethereal color for a, gold, a goldfish? Got goldfish on the brain today. For jellyfish. So that's what I'm working on with this. That is the goal. But now the fun part happens. I'm going to do its tentacles. And I have two types of stringer I've really wanted to use. I've been mulling this over for a few days. They're both from Tabitha. Um, this is her Touch of Dicro scrap, or not scrap, Vitagraph stringer. And then this, if I can pull some of it out without breaking it all, is her Midnight Blue. And it's got something in it that makes it shimmer, and I just adore it. Uh, I watched her make a moon out of it, and I really loved it. So I bought several hundred grams so I could play with it. And so what I'm going to do is put some of this lovely thin dicro in the back. And this touch, this touch of dicro stringer in the back. Glue it down. I'm going to glue it down, of course. Um, but I think it's just beautiful. And then I'm going to cover the top, cover over it with uh, the dark blue. And I think that's going to look really, really cool. Um, honestly, taste is subjective. What I'm going to do here, you might be going, Steph, that's terrible. And this is why we're going to glue all this down before it goes any further. Because I'm all excited and things are just going flying. So let's fix that. And as you see, I'm fitting the stringers up underneath. It's kind of hard to see clear on clear. But what I'm going to do is slide them up and under. And that way, they'll be a little bit visible when I when that piece slumps down. But it won't be as visible as uh, they'd be if I didn't have them hiding underneath. Yes, I can English today. Man, I'm glad my grandmother doesn't watch my videos. She's a retired English teacher. She would be so disappointed in my grammar and English some days. So there we go. Those are some short ones. This is a thicker one, but I kind of like how it looks. Will you fit under there? Be my buddy, fit? Well, let's try and nip you. Bunk. I'm going to nip just a touch off so it's not quite as thick. And slide it up here in the center. And I really like that. So what I'm going to do is leave that alone. Because I know in the end they're not going to really show as much. They're going to add just a touch of sparkle to the back. But now I'm going to get into these Midnight Blue Stringers. 
and find the smaller ones, like this one. Uh, that's too much of a curve. These are much thicker. I mean, they look great, but they are definitely a thicker sort of stringer. So I'm digging through looking for the thin ones. Like, here's a cool one. So we're going to put that one. I guess I'm probably going to need more glass tack. Because I'm going to lay it smarter than your glass tack right here and tuck it up and under because that looks really cool. I love how it's got just sort of a, um, ah, I see. It doesn't want to let me because it's a bit thick, but it looks really cool. So what I'm going to do is nip it at an angle, maybe with mosaic nippers. They're going to laugh at me. Well, we just took a quarter inch off. Let's see if then now it'll fit. There we go. But there, that looks like a jellyfish tentacle. Nice thing of having bought as much as I did, and I bought a lot, uh, is that I've got plenty of pieces to dig through and look for to find the perfect piece. There's one that looks really cool. I'm digging for the thin ones. There's a lot of thick stuff in here. And that looks pretty cool. And that can just go in like this. And they'll flatten out during firing. But I mean, it looks like a jellyfish. Actually, I'll flip it the other way. Because I think it makes more sense to me that it would be thicker to thin. Of course, this could be a mad world where jellyfish are however they want to look. There we go, but I'm going to need some longer ones. Because isn't that what jellyfish are about, all those really long tentacles? So dig, dig, dig. Don't mind my arm in the frame. There's a nice long one. It's going to be interesting to see how these slump down in the kiln. Because right now that's about three inches off the ground. And I love it, but uh, it's not going to stay that way, and I'm not putting in enough stuff to make it stay up. Not as many gentle curves with the, uh, the dark blue, but it's still just so freaking pretty. I was like, if I don't use this in something, I am... I mean, I bought it to make moons and things like that, but I'm like, you better use it in something awesome stuff. All right, well, this is nice. It's kind of thin in the middle, but it's thick at both ends. So what I'm going to do is snap it and keep just this part because that's a nice longer shaft. And again, these will probably just smooth out once they fire. I tend to go with the less is more approach. I know a lot of people love to use lots of stuff, but I just... I've never really been that sort. It's funny though, because I love looking at stuff that has it's busy with lots of things. And me, I'm just like, nah, I'll do like three things. It's enough. But I do see that I've got an even number of blue stringers. And that's generally odds are more aesthetically pleasing. So we're going to slip one more in. There we go. And there with that one, which needs some gel. Everything is buddy to me, even my cat. There we go. That'll work. Now, I really like how this is going to look. I'm not sure how it's all going to look fused, but we will find out. And I think it needs a few little bubbles. And I have these half-inch dots that I've made and some quarter-inch dots because you can never have enough dots. And I have a set of tweezers right here. Lucky me. So what I'm going to do is put some squeak glass tack gel down just a little and start dipping and uh, placing these dots some big ones because why not 
And then a handful of little small ones. I think I'm even going to put one on the jellyfish, like a bubble. I'm going to do a few more of the small ones, I think. And this itty bitty one I can squeeze in here. And one more. Yeah, because I've got six dots, and again, they say odd numbers are more pleasing. So there we go. And I think that looks pretty good. I realize that a lot of it's out of frame, so you're going, what the hell is she doing? Um, I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see the whole thing, because my camera is pretty close to the work surface. And there goes a bat. We call him Bruce, or her Bruce. But yeah, as you can see, as they're moving about, that they're pretty high in the air. So I think it's going to be interesting when they slump, but when you keep watching this through the magic of editing, I will have the finished piece to show you. Okay, Stephanie here again, and it's actually been more than a day since I did the jellyfish using the little blue stringers. Uh, what happened was I put it in and it's a striker and I didn't hold, so it didn't strike. So I had myself one clear jellyfish and it just, it was really difficult to see. So I threw it back in and I just pulled it back out and this is what it looks like. Now it's not as easy to see and I don't think I'll be using the opaline again just because it didn't strike enough. This time I put it in for an hour and I just don't think the opaline's going to work with this. But it looks cute. I'll run it up the thing. These turned out really nice. Now, the first time I fused them, I'm kind of disappointed. The first time I fused them, I got little strikes of silver in them. So it must have been the blue steel, steel blue bullseye. But those strikes, stripes have gone away since I refused them. So, oh well, you live and learn. I'm going to use this piece of, uh, sorry, bang for the camera. Uh, use this piece of dicro, and I'm going to set it on it. So you can see how you can actually see the jellyfish now. So this didn't turn out quite as well as I wanted, although I do have a nice bulge here to give a nice three-dimensional shape. Let's see if I can turn this on its side and you can see. So that's nice. It's got the bubble on it. The stringers are pretty flat at this point from two firings, and these bubbles are not nearly as bouncy as they were. Bouncy. I'm tired. But all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, it just tells me I'm going to need a different color for the jellyfish body. But for a first attempt, this didn't go so bad. Also, here's a sneak peek of one of my next projects. And I will be talking about that in a couple of weeks. But thank you for watching. If this was useful to you, I would appreciate a like or a subscribe. I post new content every couple of weeks. Thank you.